Authorities arrest a man charged in Akron, shooting believed to be Hell's Angels member. He was on the run for more than a month. This by the Beacon Journal, Ohio.com. Akron, U.S. Marshals in Northern Indiana arrested Monday evening a man who is believed to be a member of the 81 Motorcycle Club and had been on the run since April after he cut off his court-ordered ankle monitor. Well, those things are kind of freaking irritating. According to a news release, in September 2018, the Northern Ohio Violent Fugitive Task Force arrested Robert Lee Greathouse, 53, who faces charges of felonious assault after a shooting in Akron. Members of the task force tracked Greathouse to a rural cabin in Cadiz. Two pistols and a rifle were found in the home at the time of the arrest. Hey, maybe he was hunting, I don't know. In April, Great House was given a short-term furlough prior to beginning his prison sentence on the felonious charges. When it was learned that he was on the run, the task force began working on the case almost immediately. Investigators into Great House's whereabouts took investigators into various cities in Ohio, West Virginia, and ultimately his arrest in Bourbon, Indiana. Great House will remain in custody in Indiana until he can be extradited back to Akron. You might want to go back to Ohio. Indiana stuff stinks over there, man. I'm telling you. The task force consists of federal, state, and local agencies including Akron, Barbetton, Bath, my city name, <laughs> and Coheca Falls Police, Summit County Sheriff's Office, and the U.S. Marshals Service. You notice how they got involved right away, the U.S. Marshals? They always do. Anyway, police reveal why they blocked 81 from entering the country. Because they pose a risk. Andy Robinson is the multimedia reporter on this story. Officers refuse to let certain members of the 81 even step foot in the country for the Euro run. Some of the violent criminals who were barred entry have been convicted of murder, kidnap, torture, drug supply, violent assault, and firearm offenses this according to your blue gang they had anticipated around 3,000 members of the motorcycle club would be visiting from all over the world to mark the 50th anniversary of 81 in the uk and dibber actually did point out it's illegal to have a knife <laughs> oh my God, these members were staying on the Surrey and Sussex borders for a private event at a hotel in East Surrey. Hmm. Relive Hell's Angels ride out as a hundred bikers took to the A23. Some 700 motorcyclists were then expected to ride down the A23 from Pease Pottage to Brighton Seafront. But this number was much smaller than anticipated, with just over 100 making the ride out. Well, you expect people to ride when you got the blue gang everywhere on them? On top of the 27 people who refused entry to the UK, some bikers who did make it onto roads ended up in police custody before the big event even began. Hmm. Uh, Wednesday, an order, Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act 1994 was introduced, allowing individuals within a designated area of Surrey and Sussex to be stopped and searched. Well, that ain't, you know, different. Anyway, this was put in place following information that some may be carrying offensive weapons offensive weapons people while others were prevented from riding after failing breathalyzers test well put the blue gang in there i bet they did too 
In total, 49 people were arrested in connection with the event, and a number have already been sentenced at court. Hey, that's a fast tracking right there, man. That's fast tracking. Uh, Nev Kemp, Assistant Chief Constable for Surrey Police, said, We made great efforts to work with the event organizers beforehand to ensure those attending got the message about what was expected here. Sadly, some didn't heed the warning. Gotta listen to them Blue Gang members, man. However, our approach, as well as some self-breath testing by riders ahead of the main ride on Saturday, significantly reduced numbers riding to Brighton. We had initially expected 700, but just over 100 took part. Well, there you go. Police profiling at its best. This was a unique event that has never happened on anything like this scale in the UK before and required careful planning to ensure the public and those attending were safe. Yes, the Blue Gang is always looking after, you know, your safety. Uh, following information we received as the week went on, I decided to put the Section 60 order in place. Yeah, you have a feeling the guy wants to run for some kind of office or something. Just me. We benefited from the knowledge shared by our international colleagues about the attendees from their countries and the risks that they pose. See, every, they all work together, people. We were also able to prevent some, uh, 27 people from entering the UK. All of those refused entry were international members of 81 and deemed to pose a risk to the public with previous convictions for serious violent crimes. Again, he goes on, uh, throw it in there. Murder, kidnap, torture, drug supply, violent weapons, and firearms offenses. Yes, he has to throw it in there. Hells Angels events have not routinely passed without very serious incidences when they have taken place in other countries, and a measure of success for us is ensuring that it passed without serious incidences here in the UK. Man, I feel sorry for you over there, Deb. I really do, man. Europol have been very complimentary about the UK policing operation. It was a busy weekend in Brighton with the Kemp Town Carnival and the England women's football at the Amex. You know, football over there, guys, is soccer. Here. ACC Kemp said he was incredibly proud of his um, efforts. He's patting himself on the back. Leave and days off were canceled to cope with the influx of day trippers. This according to a source at Kemp. Dot, or not Kemp, Kent.com. My fault. Sorry. And finally, Adam Thompson of the Independent Tribune. John Joker Silver started speaking. Steel Rain Motorcycle Club in 2011 with the intention of giving back to the community. Silver and Roger Odie Odom, who served in the Army National Guard, have been with the Concord Club since its inception. Their passion following their time in the military is to help their fetter, fellow veterans, and we always support our veterans here at Insane Throttle. Back in 2011, when we decided to start this, this was it was going to be all about to find a way to help local veterans. The guy next door who may need some help, said Silver, the club's president. Impact locally, impact often. We try to find as many people as we can, and we do what we can to try and help them. That's what really bikers are about right there. The Motorcycle Club learned about the story of Robert Knipp, who served in the United States Army during Desert Storm. Knipp, who is from Cliffside, North Carolina, was diagnosed with a brain tumor last November and had it removed in December. He had a job as a truck driver to support his family. However, since the operation, he had had his CDL license suspended. Yeah, without that, they can't make their money. 
To assist with some of the family's funds, the Steel Rain Motorcycle Club raised $2,000 by selling barbecue plates in March. He was there hanging out and was in tears, said Scott Gunner Hoffman, the Steel Rain Motorcycle Club Sergeant at Arms. He couldn't believe that people he didn't know would do that. We just wanted to help out a local veteran. That is awesome, guys. That is awesome. Since then, Knip learned he had a tumor in his kidney. Oh, man. I hate cancer. The Steel Rain Motorcycle Club is putting on a dice run on July 27th, starting at the Dixie Drifter Clubhouse in Gastonia. The event was originally scheduled for Saturday, but with incl coming inclement weather, they had to postpone it. So they moved the date back up. So you guys, you listen and get to this thing. All of the proceeds are going to Knip's family. Registration fee is $10, and each additional hand is $5. He's a vet, and that's primarily who we support, Hoffman said. If we can find somebody locally, we definitely want to do that. Again, registration starts at 11 a.m., and the last motorcycle leaves the lot by noon. The Steel Rain Motorcycle Club makes it its mission to serve local veterans around the area with many fundraisers throughout the year. The club does annual barbecues, car and bike shows, and rides that all benefit local veterans. They even went to an assisted living facility and adopted a veteran and gave them gifts. What an organization. So uh, those out there, you guys get out to this event if you can. Uh, it sounds like a real good thing this club's doing, helping the veterans. And don't forget, today marks the 75th anniversary of D-Day. When our boys, they stormed the beaches of Normandy, Omaha, and all over that stuff. And they went on the fight, the worst regime known in the history of man. A lot of them, they're not going to be around in a couple years. So make sure you uh, get your hand out there, support our local vets, and especially the greatest generation before it's too late. With that, thanks for uh, tuning in to the Biker Angler Biker News. And don't forget, on Saturday, 11 o'clock, Motorcycle Madhouse, we have a hell of a guest coming up. Uh, also, next week, Monday, same deal. With that, I'll talk to you guys later. You guys have a good day, and uh, be careful, and watch them damn cagers, people.